Well, now to a story that's been generating a big response from viewers this morning. Authorities in Victoria have cited obesity as a factor in a number of court decisions to remove children from the care of their parents. And in one case, a teenager was reported to be whiter than she was tall. So parents should... So should parents be worried about overweight children being removed from their home? John Dixon is an associate professor at the Baker IDI Heart and Diabetes Institute and he joins us now. Good morning. Thank you very much for being here. Are you concerned by this move from Victorian authorities and should they have the power to remove children from their parents in these cases? Well, I think there, there's, there's lots of concerns about obesity. I think We've got to understand that, there, that if, as, as the waistlines of our kids grow, we're going to have these extreme cases of obesity and uh, that it's not the obesity itself that would lead to a child being removed from their home, uh, but it would be a range of circumstances that would make it difficult for that child to be managed in the best way at home. We've got to think of the, the, the rights of the child, the best interests of the child, if it's, if it's counterproductive to be at home, then in very rare circumstances that child may be uh, may, may be best off not at home. I guess the question is, is it a form of child abuse or at the very least parental neglect to allow our children to become so obese? I mentioned a couple of cases there in the introduction. In fact, uh, I was a bit misleading there with that, that, uh, that girl who was in fact her, the circumference of her waist was greater than her overall height. Obviously an extreme example, but nonetheless, it, it proves the case that uh, obesity is a huge problem that we're trying to address. Oh, there's no doubt obesity is a huge problem, but it's a societal problem, it's a community problem. We have to address it very well indeed. We're not doing so. We're not, we're not, we're not winning. It is not a, a, a situation uh, very, very often at all of parental neglect. In, other, in, in most circumstances, it's just the opposite. Parents are very concerned about the weight of their children. They are, are putting a lot of effort into doing things about it, and they don't get a lot of response uh, from our, our healthcare professionals and, and services, etc. We have very few services to manage children who are very big, and, uh, and parents are often reluctant to go to the doctor and talk about, or a paediatrician, and talk about the weight of their child for fear that they will be classified as being negligent or or, or not looking after those uh, their children very well at all. We need to give good practical family advice uh, to prevent obesity and, and to treat it when it's there. And when we, when we see severe obesity, it does need careful treatment and careful consideration by experts, and we don't have those experts. Are we likely to see more cases like this? Yes, we're likely to see, as, as, as we see the average child growing in size, we will see a small group that are very, very big. And it's driven by the, both the, the background of the child, the, the genetics, the, the, the way the child was nourished during pregnancy, early, early life. By the time we've got an adolescent who's obese, they're likely to have a lifetime of battling their weight. And the very tip of that iceberg are very big children. And they should be, they should be respected and looked after well. Aside from the genetics, uh, could it also be a case that perhaps it's symptomatic of social problems within a family? Yes, it, it can be. There are a whole range of uh, of environmental issues, the food, the, the, the lack of transport, the, all sorts of things. But it also can be symptomatic of dysfunctional families. And I think this is the circumstance where, where, where there's problems. Uh, mental illness, uh, uh, siblings with disabilities, all sorts of things that really make family life for some of these children very, very complex indeed and produce that rare circumstance where they may, have, they may be better off at, out of home for a while. Now, we know you're not a psychologist, but no. the, the psychological impact, what's, I guess, almost worse for children? Is it staying in that environment where they are surrounded by food and are allowed to continue to eat or being removed from their natural environment? I think we've, we've always got that balance and I think it's as a very rare event that we would take a child out of their natural environment. We would always want to work with the family with simple practical things to try and at least stop the child getting worse and then think about uh, a therapeutic options that we have to try and make a difference. Many of our viewers have expressed concern today about state intervention which is obviously the case that we've seen with these uh, couple of examples. Is that something you would be concerned about if we have greater state intervention? What I would like is that the problematic children are actually sorted out through our healthcare system and that parents are, feel ready and free to go and get advice from their medical practitioners and paediatricians and so forth. But at the moment there, is, there are inadequate services for these, these group of children and, and really, and, and then the blame game. So you can see why parents would be reluctant to go and seek help uh, when, 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 when our society doesn't treat their child's problem as a disease, which it is.
Associate Professor John Dixon, thank you very much. Thank you.